Coogan Cassius. I'm joined by the legendary man of screen, Vaz Blackwood. How are you, sir? Very well indeed. Very well indeed. And how are you, Coogan? I'm very well. I'm glad you asked. Not many people ask how we are. You know, we ask how you are, but not many people get that back. Well, you look like you've got the shakes, so I think maybe you, you've been on the drink or what, last night? No, 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 definitely not the drink last night. I think it was the after effects from the weekend in Glasgow. Say no more, my brother. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vaz, obviously, you know, we've known each other for, for a while now, and I know one thing about you, um, aside from your uh, film career, which we'll come on to uh, in a little bit, you're a huge, huge boxing fan. You're, you're probably the most obsessive tweeter I see tweeting about boxing. You want to see all these big fights, and you, you love it. Yeah, I am a great fan of the boxing. I have been since, uh, well, since, you know, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. My dad used to, like, um, listen to the um, fights on the radio and Clay would say certain things. Well, Muhammad Ali at the time, well, Clay, call him Muhammad Ali, at the time would say things like, you know, the guy might be full of tricks, I'm going to win in the six. And I used to get up in the morning, my dad would listen to it on the radio, and I'd get up in the morning before school and say, Dad, 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 did he win? And Dad would say, yeah, he won. I said, did he do him in the sixth? And he said, no, it was in the fourth. But anyway, you know, and I just used to like the way he carried on and Joe Fraser. So I've been a fight fan, you know, ever since those days, you know. So it's um, something that I'm really into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a common thing from people that f have followed boxing for a long time to kind of compare those eras to these eras. And you can call that unfair, but it's all comparisons are going to be made through history. But... What, what are you saying about the, the current state of British boxing in particular and also on the world scene? Well, I mean, it's all very exciting at the moment. Uh, one of my favourite um, champions, I mean, I have to firstly must say, um, get well soon, Tyson Fury. I'm a great fan of Tyson. He's just, the, he's just the character, wonderful fighter. And I have to also say as well, well done, Tyson Fury. He really deserved a little bit more accolade for what he did to go there to another man's backyard and beat him comprehensively. So best of luck, Tyson. And, um, you know, whatever he's going through at the moment, I'm sure with the love of his family, because he's got a lovely family around him and, uh, you know, a lot of um, close relatives very cl close by him. And he's also just, you know, he'll get back. He'll be good. So Tyson did what he did. And then all of a sudden it just like ripped itself open, the heavyweight division. And, um, well, we've got, you know, uh, we've got, Guys, we've got um, guys in America that are in um, contention, Deontay Wilder. And uh, there's a few that I've been trying to, because I try, what I try to do, okay, you've got the ones that we know of, the mark, the top boys, the elite fighters, but there are a few coming up. And I've been trying to like, you know, just do the stats and work these guys out. But then back over here now, it's getting so exciting. Do you know, there's um, this Anthony Yard. Yard, is it Yard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent fighter you know, who's going to have to be given a chance next year, really. Because, I mean, he's, he's more than just a contender. He looks like the real deal. And then, obviously, the big man, AJ. You know, and um, AJ now holding that title, it's going to put... I think it'll just put the heavyweight division in the UK in contention. I believe the Americans don't like it. I mean, I read a lot of the um, social media stuff and hear some of the stuff that they say about our fighters over here. But, you know, that's just the way it is. I mean, Klitschko is from Europe. But, uh, and he held the title for long enough. But I just think that since Mike Tyson, there's not been a dominant heavyweight out of America. I believe that um, there are some fighters coming up soon in this country that will, um, I mean, I, I mentioned the name of the game, AJ, and I know I'm doing it on Box Nation, but I know that he's gonna really sort of um, stand up for himself in the division. And that makes it even more so interesting because it means that promoters, such as like, you know, Box Nation can put forward fighters to take him on. And you know, it just takes one, one punch with the heavyweight. So I really do enjoy it. I mean, I come from the days of like Bruno Tyson and everything. So I'm a little bit spoilt for, you know, for, um, it's hard to, um, how can I say it? It's hard to please me, but um, I like what I'm seeing, presently speaking, yeah. I mean, just coming on to, um, we'll come on to Joshua in a bit, because listen, regardless of what channel he's, he's fighting on, everyone can appreciate uh, what Anthony Joshua has done over the last few years. But I want to come on to Anthony Yard. He's, he's one of the stars on, on Box Nation. Yeah. Um, he's a light heavyweight. He looks like a cruiserweight. He yeah. looks like a heavyweight. But yeah. uh, this guy's got undoubted talent. And, I mean, I asked him the other day how he makes the weight for, for light heavyweight. He says he makes it quite comfortably. Yeah. Uh, but we can probably see him possibly over the next couple of years moving up to cruiserweight and who knows in the future maybe on to heavyweight but he from what you've seen of Anthony Yard you, you, you're impressed by it? 
Yeah, I believe that he should just continue with his training and slowly but surely move up to the heavyweight division because he looks like a heavyweight to me. And I think that that's where the, well, obviously, that's where the money is. But he's a great talent. And he moves like, I mean, he's got that speed, hasn't he? And he's very vicious in the way that he fights. So great intent, good sportsman, good athlete. He looks like he could like, do quite a few different sports. He probably played football really well and various things like that, rugby and everything. But he's a very good athlete, uh, very supple, great movement. He's not quite one dimensional. He looks like the real deal. So I, th I believe that it will be an easy process for him to sort of fill his boots and get into that sort of like the heavyweight division and um, you know, just branch out into that. Because be, he'll be a lot more comfortable. Because I'm sure you know, it can be hard work trying to break down the weight. And, and he, he's, he, I mean, he's, he's fairly young as well, isn't he? He's not very old. So you know, he's filling out. You know? So once he eats some of that good old West Indian food, man, and straighten up his guy out there and you know, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. Vaz, I mean, coming back onto the heavyweight division, it's it's more talked about now, more exciting uh, than it has been for the last however many years. And and Tyson Fury did open that up for everyone um, over a year ago now. Went to Dusseldorf, done the unthinkable. No one gave him uh, an ounce of uh, you know uh, willingness for him to do it or yeah. believing he can do it more specifically. Yeah. But he did do it, and it's been a bit of a sad tale since then. Um, we do hope he returns back to the ring. There's some huge fights there. David yeah. Hayes coming back, yeah. or has come back rather. Um, so he'll be in some big fights next year. And you mentioned Deontay Wilder, and we've got Chisora, we've got De uh, Dylan White, we have David Price. It it's exciting times. Yeah, Price and there's Stavern as well out in America. I like Stavern. I think he's a very good boxer. Ben, uh, ben um, is it Ben? Yeah, Bermain. Bermain, that's it, just Stavern from, well, lives in the States, but hey, Haitian. He's a great fighter, actually, and you know he gave a really good account of himself when he fought um, Wilder. Really good account of himself, and I believe that he'll overcome in his next fight, and he'll come forward again and maybe probably take on one of the um, the boys out here. But you know, getting back to the thing with Tyson, it's just that I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, we live in a society where one has to be very careful what one says, but one also has to. Not take pity. I mean, if someone says certain things which are a little bit over the top or a little bit negative, rather than chastise that individual and rather than, um, um, <clears throat> you know, banish him or reject him or bar him or just, you know, just not want to have anything to do with him, I think it's often a good idea to sort of just, you know, sit them down, have a quiet chat, work it through, because it's PR. And, you know, Tyson did upset some people, but personally, one has to stick by, he's got views, he's, he's, a, he's a Christian. I heard something recently, but I'm not gonna go into that, but uh, about his religion, but um, as in, he might be converting to something else, I don't know, That's just, I think someone was joking with me, but he's a, he's a Christian and um, Christians have views. And, you know, rather than get on his back and say, you know, certain things about him, and you know, the business about his wife, come on. That's tongue and cheek. What do you think? She's going to divorce him. No, no, no. That's tongue and cheek. That's her fella. I mean, you know, you, 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 for those of you out there, you have your wife's partners, whatever it may be. You know, there's always the joker in the, in, in, in the relationship. And that's the way, we, that's how, listen, if you're straight and stern and boring with each other all the time in a relationship, how's that relationship going to exist? You've got to have some banter, have some patter. And I'm sure Tyson does all the cooking in the house. I'm sure he does. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, that's just how it works. Men are better cooks than women anyway. That's what, listen, the word chef is a male word. So take that, put that in your pipe and smoke it. But anyway, what he did was amazing. And I think that he craved love because everyone does crave love, love and attention from the world. But they just weren't going to give it to him. And I think that probably really hurt him, really hurt him. And um, listen, he was, he's different from Frank Bruno. He's different from Lennox Lewis, great champions. Listen, turning up at a fight in a Batman outfit. <laughs> I mean, I want to do some acting work with Tyson, man, because he's funny, you know. But getting on to it, mental health issues is something which um very close to my heart. I mean, I work a lot in chat with charities, and I do quite a lot with the mental health, um, quite a few mental health charities. And um, I've had friends that have suffered from mental health um, issues, you know, and... Um, I mean, listen, I'm an actor. I meet people every day that I've never met before in my life because they recognise me from the TV and whatnot. And I sometimes have guys come up to me and they're not quite well. I might be with my children. But you know what? I don't run away from them. I don't, I'm not rude to them. I basically try and work it out with them, talk to them and be nice. But 
it's just, I just can't quite understand why we're a little bit politically correct to be politically incorrect. You just got to take time with some people. Some people say some brash things, they don't mean it. And you know, we have to, Bob Marley says, one love, you know, we have to kind of like love each other, be more loving. Listen, Tyson's not someone who's gone out there and committed awful things like murder and, you know, terrible things. He's a boxer and some of the most intelligent people I know are boxers. So, um, I mean, Barrera, Barrera was a lawyer, he's got a law degree or something like that, many of them, and I'm not even going to go into that, but he's just, he's just a man. But what I did notice as well was that people were, especially on social media, people were very much having a go at his, um, his background, being a traveller, a gypsy. Now, I come from Jamaican parentage, and I was born and bred here, and you know what? My parents went quite through a lot, and, uh, and the gypsies are just the, same, just the same as the Jamaicans, what we've been through. But we're here, we're not going anywhere. And they're wonderful people, very religious, and they cuss a lot, just like the Jamaicans. That's how we are, same as the Irish. Some of my um, closest friends are Irish. In actual fact, on my, my parents' side, and not a lot of people know this, but we have Irish blood. And that was due to the fact that Irish slaves, when they had, when they, not indentured slaves, when they had the Irish potato famine in the 18 something, um, farmers and uh, men that toiled the land in Ireland, because a lot of people died in Ireland when the p p potato famine, were um, offered land in Jamaica. And a lot of them did go over there. So, you know, we've got places like Sligo in, um, in Jamaica and various other areas. And, you know, my great great grandfather, his nickname was Irish. He had Irish blood. So, uh, I know it's fairly fine and hard to believe, but it's actually true. So I know my Jamaican history, but so I'm very close with the Irish community and I was brought up in North London, very close with the Irish community and um, they're just great people. So I just believe, and, and some of the things that I've read and what they say about Tyson, I, you know, some of those people should be locked up because if that's what you think about travellers, you know, you obviously don't know the essence of those people. Cause they're very spiritual people, so be careful what you say because karma is a bitch. <laughs> Vaz, obviously, uh, we saw Billy Joe Saunders over the weekend in Scotland defend his uh, WBO middleweight crown. Um, he himself was very critical of his performance. He's been out of the ring for a year, but probably a bit of ring rust, a few problems uh, in his camp. But he got the job done ultimately uh, on Saturday night. Yeah, first I've got to say, Billy and I, we follow each other on Twitter and I call him the white Usain Bolt because he can really move that kid. In actual fact, I've heard he's beaten Bolt in 100 metres in training. It was like closed doors, but he has beaten him, but he can move, can Billy. Go on, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just love that man, he's a great boxer. Um, yeah, do you know what was admirable? The way he did take himself apart and the way he, he just basically told everyone that that was such a terrible fight. And, um, well, because it's obvious, we all know how well he can do. I mean, he schooled Chris Eubank Jr. And um, I have to say that, uh, I've got a lot of admiration for Chris Eubank Jr. But I'm telling you, Billy schooled him, schooled him, because it's all one, 50%, well no, actually 90% of the fight is one up there. And I know, you know, I, I know Chris uh, Eubank Jr.'s father, he used to go and watch his fights all the time with um, 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 Barry Hearn and those great promotions, great nights. And I know that Chris used to win a lot of the fights because he, he used a lot of psychology, you know, and um, his son has that. His son also has an amazing, amazing presence, amazing skill, great pugilist, but don't, don't get this twisted. Billy Joe Saunders beat Chris Eubank Jr. He schooled him. And that's the champion and that's the fighter that I believe can go on and do great things with Triple G and also um, Canelo. But, you know, one year out is quite a while. And he's also a family man again. And he looks after his family. He's got friends around him and he gets on. He's got a life to lead. So obviously, you know, I was a little bit disappointed to hear that Jimmy Tibbs wasn't going to be in his corner because, you know, they work very well together. And once again, Billy said, you know, he's going to sit down and have a chat with them, with, with, with Jimmy Tibbs. You know what? The humility, you know, I just like the way he was just so humble. And that says a lot about Billy Joe. I think people get him wrong again because, you know, he kind of like, you know, he's, he's a comedian. He's great. You know, it's banter. Um, don't get it twisted once again because what Billy does as a fighter, because you've got to respect every single boxer out there, they train so hard. But 
they have great sense of humour. I'd love to do some acting with Billy as well when he's ready because he's definitely got it. But, um, you know, he did say that what happened with Jimmy, you know, was um, he'll sit down, he'll talk to him and whatever, whatever happens, whatever happens in camp stays in camp. But all those haters that don't like Billy Joe Saunders, maybe because of his heritage, or maybe because they're Chris Eubank Jr. fans, have a little bit of respect, take time. As I've said, one love, love each other. Love is the conqueror. Love, love oversees everything. And just listen a little bit to what he's saying. And if you can, if you can say something back to him on social media with a bit of positivity, then you've done something good. But don't be rude. Don't say nasty things about his background because he didn't ask to be born into that background. Like, I didn't ask to be born as a Jamaican, but I'm so proud. But I don't want to ram that down people's throats. But if you're going to ram any rubbish at me, I want to just laugh at you because, and like, that's what he does. And he gives it back just as much as he gets. Remember, he's a great fighter. Now, I do want to see him in his next fight take himself a little bit more seriously because I don't think he did but he's one of the most skillful he's just like Mayweather the Mayweather thing you know hit and not be hit it's not all about the aggression and that's why he scored Eubank Jr because Eubank Jr goes on about his power but <laughs> boy well, listen what is power when you're hitting fresh air when a man is slipping your punches and fighting back but um yeah once again let Billy, get, let Billy reach those heights because when Billy reaches those heights, you're all going to get paid. Everyone's going to get paid and you're going to get paid good money. But he needs to reach those heights and he needs to step up in gear. But it won't be a problem for him because he's an ultimate professional. I'll tell you who I know as well. I, I see him a lot over the Heath. Hampstead Heath is um, the gorilla. Um, my boy, um, John Ryder. Good boy. Big up John. John from the Islington. Good man, good man. He's a good boxer as well. Very good fighter. There's loads of them out there, but it's a great division, the middleweight division. Great division. And as I said, one, once again, love each other, be cool, be humble. You know, there's so much, there's so much prestige and humility. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool, David, hey? <laughs> David went mad on Barry the other day. Dude. Sorry, I shouldn't really be saying that. But yeah, just be cool. It's nice to be cool. Take your time. Mike Tyson used to be like that. He just used to be like really cool. He used to say some offbeat things, but you know, he'd look the guy in the eye and say he's just gonna, he's just gonna win, you know? And um, I think some of the fighters need to tone it down a little bit and do the talking in the ring. That, that's just the old fashioned me. And I, I mean, not an old fashioned me, but I'm spoilt for choice because I've seen so many great champions and they've been so laid back, so cool. You know what I mean? And um, Frank was like that, you know? And um, I think the only, one of the only fighters that actually really could do it and did it ultimately like the best I've ever seen was Nassim Hamid, the Prince. And I still keep in touch with the Prince and uh, great fighter again, but he, he actually could back it up to a certain degree. And you know, it's, it, 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 it comes in spates, but it's nice when you see fighters that basically um, are a bit braggadocia. They want to go out, they don't want to do a bit and show off a bit. I mean, Jack Johnson, way, way, way back throwback heavyweight, you know, the big black man there heavyweight. I mean, he, he faced so much adversity, like racism and everything, but you know, he wore his fur coat. He had two white women on either side of him. He used to drive through states and they used to not want that Negro in their state and all of this, that and the other, but pugilists, there's something, they're a different breed. So, um, as I say, you know, social media, take time, be humble. Remember, if you're not a fighter, you don't really know what, to, what, what, what these guys go through. They go through a lot. And they also have families, children, they also lead, lead a very normal life, but they're a special breed. So let's show a little bit more love for some of our English fighters out there, whether you're for them or against them. Just, you know what? If you give out a lot of love, you're going to get it back. That's, if anything, I'm going to teach the Box Nation fans out there is like all about one love, peace and love. Enjoy, enjoy your life and, you know, don't take certain things too seriously. And stop calling um, um, Tyson Fury and Billy Joe and all the others pikeys, because you know what? That's just like calling me a nigger. And I don't take too happily to that. Guns will come out. That's right, Mr. Breaker. It will be Mr. Breaker. <laughs> so, Vaz, before we continue, I need you to do something for me. Yeah, go on. 
Massive, oh, oh, as you know, massive Only Fools and Horses right, fan. Yeah. Massive Lennox Gilby fan. Yeah, so massive Lennox Gilby so fan. Can you give us the shadow rap? I will give it to you right now. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those policemen seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven or is he in hell? That damn elusive shat bad dope. <laughs> I, can, I, I can watch that just like it happened yesterday. How many years ago? That was quite a few years ago. But as the shadow says, I'm a real hard nut, you know. <laughs> That's right. Do you know what the police have called me? Yeah, the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah. That was you, was it? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's right. I'm fast and I'm fleeting. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm the boy. I'm the boy. You know what? That, that role, I was voted actually in The Guardian, number nine, top 10 TV robbers, TV and film um, robbers. Yeah. And I told my mum and she just hung up the phone. But I said, it's a good thing, mum. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The Guardian got me down for that. I love it. The Shattered Doe. Yeah, he's a killer. Longest night. When Rodney steals the fags instead of the gun. Oh, that's when Dell drops in the you plonker line. You know, John Sullivan, great writer. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Listen, everyone who's... Uh, listen, I don't know anyone who's not an Only Fools and Horses fan. And The Longest Night was great. And it had... Um, is it Jim Broadbent? Yeah, that's right. No, not Jim Broadbent. Um, Bin, is it Binden who passed away from Only Fools and Horses? He was the security... No, Only Fools and Horses. Sorry, from EastEnders. He was the... Um, he was he the played Jim Branning in, in yeah, EastEnders. Yeah, yes, right, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great actor, great actor, wonderful actor. That's right, he took me up to the office. Not the office, not the office, not the office. Please, please, please. Open the safe. You know what I mean? That's how you rob people. Listen, when I'm in supermarkets and people see me there, they say, all right, Shadar, go, listen, don't start that shit up or whatever, you know, because I ain't going to do none of that rubbish in here. I've got my children with me. <laughs> yeah, son, put them peas in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what projects you've got coming up, what you're involved with at the moment, Baz. I've done a movie in um, New Orleans called um, Nola Circus, and it's a, kind of a black comedy type of thing, very funny. It's an illicit comedy, actually, and um, shot in New Orleans. I play a New Orleans, and um, the movie comes out in the UK um, next year, uh, 2017, April. Wonderful role. Uh, I play a character called Marvin, and um, I've got issues, Marvin. Yeah, I'm a bar I own a barber shop, but I've got issues. Uh, I collect pussy hair. Yeah, you know, I've got to play these characters. Moving on swiftly, um, I've got um, Milk and Honey, a film I've just done not too long ago, which is coming out. And fast forward, I've just finished, completed shooting. That's why I've got this thing on my face here. A movie called, um, with the man, Dapper Laughs, yeah? Daniel O'Reilly, what a wonderful fella. Um, doing a movie called, and um, we just finished it called, it's a, it's a vampire movie set in a prison cell and it's called Fanged Up. Not banged up, fanged up. And it's a black comedy again, you know, tongue and cheek, but very, very funny. And I play a black gay vampire. I don't know, man, I want to walk <laughs> away, I want to walk away. I'm giving away, but I don't, you don't see me giving it or taking it, but I just confess that I am gay. All right, so before you start trolling me and saying some horrible things in the social media, I'm open-minded, man. I'm open-minded, and if, if they said you'd have to take it in the film, I would take it. Jeez. Oh, oh, God, I wasn't expecting that. No, but, it, you know, you'd, it, you'd be acting, Coogan. You of see, that's course, what, you see, of course. You're, think, you're thinking, you're thinking you'd have to literally... T no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, 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 not at all. But... Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I haven't told my mum I'm playing this role yet, because she she'd more than hang up the phone. <laughs> yeah, she, but um, no, 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 she's in her age now, so I don't really want to scare her. But no, it's a really good role, great character. He's called Shifty, and um, he's very funny. And uh, yeah, you know, and then on the new year, I'll be going out, beginning of the year, I'll be going out to Los Angeles to do, um, get on the, get in the pilot thing, you know. Uh, I'm not rushing with America. Like um, some actors are rushing to go to America and make millions. I mean, the Americans know who I am and um, I'm developing. I've got a family who I love dearly and they're here in the UK. So I'm looking after my family, presently speaking, and I'll take my time and I'll get over there and do what I've got to do. But it's very, it's a wonderful place to work as an actor, you know, just cross great roles. And they do, I mean, 
you know, I've got the skills, man. I've got the skills. And I know the UK will be well behind Uncle Vass when he's out there doing these things. So I'm going to go out there and try and, um, just the right role. That's all I need, the right role, and I'll do it. Because obviously, you know, there's lots of roles out in America and you can't play everything. But, yeah, I've got those um, um, fanged up. Look out for that. Nola Circus, Milk and Honey. And there are a couple more that I've done. I've done quite a few this year. Um, as I've done some earlier on this year, but they'll be all coming out. Oh, yes, actually, Comedian's Guide to Survival with... Um, one of the young lads from um, In Between Us, and that's out right now. Comedian's Guide for Survival. Get James Buckley. Yes, James. Yeah, James. Sorry, yeah, James. Yeah, great actor. And um, basically, you can get it on DVD. So get that for you know, put that in the Christmas in the Christmas stocking. Yeah, and I think it's also going to be on one of the. Um, I think I'm not not sure. I don't think Netflix, but one of the um, the um, sort of like online presences. But it will be out there. Maybe Amazon. But yeah, Comedian's Guide to Survival. Very funny movie. Yeah, and. Um, Oh yeah, I'm doing a movie at the beginning of next year, uh, which is a little bit like, um, I can't really say too much, but it's, I, I, I'm, it's a little bit like X Factor type of thing. But um, I'm gonna be playing a black version of like Simon Cow. But I'm gonna do it with a Don King wig. You know, I'm really horrible. It, it really says sickening things to little children and just people that aren't very talented, but I'm gonna take that to another level. I'm gonna break some hearts with the verbal and the, yeah, I'm working on that, yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Vasswood, thank you very much. Mr. Vasswood or Vass Blackwood? No, Vasswood. No, it's Vass Blackwood. No, I've, I've given you a name. Well, it, what? I've given you a name. Well, listen, listen. I'll Vass say Blackwood, Vasswood. It's only because you're my friend, Coogan, right? But you did slip up there, you know? You listen, I tried to pull it back, didn't I? Coogan. Coogan. Vasswood. Coogan said to me, right, when, 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 I, when we were just setting up the camera, he said to me, Coogan said to me, Vass. And I said, what's wrong, Coogan? He said, I want to ask you a serious question. I said, well, fire away. And he said, do you think I interview like Trevor MacDonald? And I just said, no, Coogan. You're black, but you're not Trevor MacDonald. Sorry, I had to tell him that. That's all right. You can, you can you, reel that you, one. You, know, you, you wanted to be reassured that you do your job well. I said, I said, look, listen, you do your job. You do your job, but you're no way in there, Trevor MacDonald. Right? Nowhere near him. No, no. No, no, no. He don't look like him or right. anything like Just that. Just like you're not a Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's yeah, but, yeah, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. That's right. Yeah, fair enough. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, not a Lawrence Fishburne. No, not at all. I'm Bass Blackwood. I'm, I'm proud of who I am. I don't have no issues, but I didn't ask you, am I like Lawrence Fishburne? <laughs> you asked me if you're like Trevor McDonald. Where was that coming from? I don't know, Coogan. You're a man of talent. Now. You're, but you're listen, very convincing at the moment, you are, Mr. Mr. Blackwood, yeah. No, I am. I'm telling the truth. Listen, you know what? I'll tell you what. You see what professional actors do? They walk around with lemon and ginger. Lemon and ginger, darling. You know, excuse me, got a bit of a, got a, bit of a tickle in the throat. Do you have any hot water? <laughs> hot water, darling. That's what I do, a bit of that. That's what I walk with. You know, I've got loads of it. Look, I've got a few of them. I'm not messing about, look. One for me, one for me and one for her. Fancy one of these, love. Actually, they're condoms. No, they're not. They're, um, they're, um, they're lemon and ginger. Lemon and ginger. Yeah, that's what I walk with. You wouldn't have. You wouldn't have. You'd have thought like Rory'd be walking like with a big knife or a gun. Not me. Someone comes at me. I just hold this up. Lemon and ginger, old boy. Lemon and ginger, old boy. Come on. Let's put our differences aside. Let's have one of these. Eh? What? Vaz Blackwood. Thank you very much for talking right. to us here yeah. uh, on yeah. Box Nation and. Yeah. Listen, we'll definitely catch up with you soon. We know you know your boxing, and yeah, uh, yeah we'll have some regular updates, well, some listen, VB updates. Can I just say, Frank Warren is listening. Frank, how are you, Frank? And your sons, the boys, right? They're listening. Just invite Uncle Vass along. Look, this is all I drink, lemon and ginger. There I do, plot up, put me ringside, and let me just watch the fight and enjoy myself. Yeah, come on, invite me down. I'd love to come along. You've got, some great, you've got a great stable, Box Nation. Frank Warren, got to big him up. One of the best promoters ever lived on the planet. Can't say a bad word about him. And you know what, I love it when he's being interviewed because Frank is the real deal. His boys have got a long way to go to fill them boots, but they're coming up good. But yeah, so get me down to some of the fights and you know, we can be in, you can interview me again. Um, you'll have to pay me next time because I'm freezing my nuts off out here, bro. Do you know I mean? So we're in a fucking car park. We're in a car park. We're in a car park. But I like the urban feel. It gives me like, you know, it gives me kudos, doesn't it? 
Doesn't it give me kudos? Absolutely. But when I draw out these, you think, oh, what a what a tart, what a tart, eh? What a tart. Say you, what you, you are you're off your head. You are off your head. What but we love it. We love it. <laughs> Vaz, thank you very much. And listen, we'll catch up with you real soon, mate. All right. Thank you very much for giving us your time today. Thank you very much, Coogan, and thank you very much, Box Nation. Keep on bringing those fights and keep us happy at home. One love. Rastafari.